Hey guys, stretch routines are probably one of the things I would say you can always do. So whatever's happening, no matter the injuries, the illness, unless you're pretty much on death door in hospital, I think you can do some sort of stretch. Again, you don't have to, but when we realise that and when we think that actually by carrying on doing three or more stretch routines per week when I can't do full GTP sessions, that means I've not stopped and then getting back into the GTP sessions is not starting again, it's just speeding back up, it makes the whole thing a lot easier. So I'm just going to run through a number of stretches here, but you'll probably know most of these from doing sessions with us. Uh, whatever the situation, you're not able to make your three sessions a week down here, do some stretching, do it in front of the TV. If you're away with work, do it in the hotel before you go to bed, do it on waking up. I, I genuinely think out of the 10,080 minutes, I, I can't envisage any situation where someone couldn't use 15 of those to do some stretching, other than perhaps they just choose not to. So you could stretch hamstrings. Anything where you've got that flexion through the hip there, so where your body basically is coming down closer to a straight leg, will get the hamstring. So you've got a seated hamstring stretch like that. You've got different variations on standing hamstring stretches, like so, or like so. Anything where you get a bend through the knee is going to be a quad stretch. What most people find is just holding the foot like that isn't sufficient because they have a, a reasonable range of motion in the quad. So getting that push forward on the hip should enable you to get enough of a stretch in there. The hip flexor stretch is a great one to do. And I'd probably say, if you can't do anything else for whatever reason, if you stretch your hip flexors and your calves three times a week, that's going to be a big win. For your hip flexor, it's something where you have the hip going forward and the knee and shoulder going back on the same side. So kneeling one, nice and simple, same arm raised as the rear leg. So my right leg is back, my right arm is up, push my hip forward, take my shoulder back, and as you can see, I'm increasing this angle here to get a stretch in the front of the hip. The calf stretch is anything where the toe comes towards the knee. So a really simple one is on all fours like that, driving the heel down towards your floor. Similar sort of thing up against the wall to have that back foot pointing straight forward and just lean further and further into it again to get the toe and the knee close to each other to increase that stretch. Good upper body ones you can do for the chest is anything where your arm goes back relative to the body. So nice and simple, you can put your arm against the wall and rotate the chest and shoulders away from it. For the tricep, it's anything where you bend the elbow, but also to get an effective stretch, most people find that having the elbow raised puts it in a more elongated position. So for nearly everyone, you'll have done this one at school, just pull around the back of the neck, keeping the shoulders and head straight. So there's a few stretches. You'll probably know a few of the ones from the sessions that we've done. But the very worst thing, I think, that whatever's happening in your life, if you do three lots of five minutes-ish, of that per week, then you've never stopped. You're never having to restart again. You're just speeding back up again when the situation allows.